Hello and welcome to another video on Inkscape, a free open source vector graphics editor. To learn where you can download a copy and how to use it, click on the link in the top right hand corner of the screen. If you find this video helpful, then help us by giving a like and subscribing to the channel. Remember to hit the bell icon so you're notified when we release new videos. In this video I want to take a look at clipping and masking and how we can use it to create some nice effects. A lot of people associate vector graphics with um, images like this one where it's just block colors to make up the image. A lot of people don't realize that you can with a few simple techniques create images like this chili where we've got reflections, shadows and it just generally looks altogether more realistic. So I'm going to show you in this video a few simple techniques you can use to to get your images to look more like this one. So to get started I'm going to come up and grab the ellipse tool. I'm going to drag out an ellipse. I'm going to change that to green, increase the opacity up to full. I'm then going to go up to path, object to path, just to convert it to a, a path and not a predefined shape. I'm then going to add a couple of extra nodes. To add nodes you can just double click with your nodes tool where you want to position your nodes. So we've got another two nodes there. So we're going to take this top node and I'm going to drag it up to give us a pear shape. We get even and there we got a reasonable pear shape. So what we want to do now is add some shadow. Um, when you're drawing an image you want to think about where the light source is coming from. So I'm going to put a highlight down this side and a shadow at the back so we've kind of got our light coming from the front and from the right hand side from that kind of direction. So when we think about it we want shadow down the back here and we want to highlight down the front. So we start with the shadow so we get up, go up and get our Bezier tool. Because we're going to be using blurring to make it more graduated we want to make sure that our, our shading object overlaps quite a way over the outside so that the blurring doesn't end up with this side of our shading being lightened. So we're going to start just drawing around the outside. We've got our shape so what we want to do is colour it in. We use a dark green so we can select our dark green from the bottom and we want to get rid of the stroke so we're going to hold down shift and we're going to click on the X which will get rid of the stroke around the outside of our shape. So this is our shading that we want. To cut it out to the same shape as the pair we need a cookie cutter. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up, grab our selection tool, we're going to come down, select the pair and we're going to press Control D to duplicate it. And this duplicated shape is going to be our cookie cutter to cut out around the pear shape. So if we have that selected, press shift, select our shading area, and then we're going to go up to object, down to clip, and we're going to click on set. And that gives us a nice clean cut edge. Now at the moment, we haven't got this nice graduated um, shading. But what we can actually do now is use blur. So if we get blur and drag it over, it only blurs the edge of our shaded shape. So the piece that we've cut off is also blurred around the edge. But the actual clipping clips a nice sharp edge to our shape. So this gives this ability to have a nice crisp edge on one side and a graduated um, shading on the other. So we can do the same again with highlights. So we just come up, get our Bezier tool. We're just going to draw out a rough highlight shape. Like so, if we fill that in with white, um, hold down shift again, and we get rid of any stroke. We can go up to our nodes tool. If we don't really like it, we can adjust it slightly. When we're happy with it, we can add a little bit of blur. I 
what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change it to a lighter green. So I'm going to select the green from down here, which is the same at the moment. And then I'm going to come up to the fill in stroke box and I'm just going to drag down the lightness to make it lighter. So there we have a pear shape drawn out. It's not perfect, but we've got a bit of shading down this side. We've got a highlight on this side. Obviously, the more time you take, the better you can get it to look. In some cases, you may want to uh, use this, this technique for blurring, but you won't want this sharp edge on the outside. You might want that semi-blurred, so you've just got a softer edge. The only way I know of doing that is to use... Um, is to blur the layer that you've drawn it on. So if we go up to layers, I've got layers opened up here. You can also open your layers dialog box from the top here. So you click on that, it'll bring it down into your dialog box section. So I'm working on blank canvas at the moment. So sorry, what we can do is blur the whole of the layer. So if you were doing this and you just wanted to blur a particular object, you'd have to stick that object on a separate layer. But as you can see now, we're getting a soft edge on the outside of our pair. Like I say, because I've got everything on here on the same layer, it's creating this blur effect on the arrow as well. But if we click on our orange pepper, chili pepper, you can see that that's still nice and crisp. So that's clipping. Actually, while we're still on clipping, let's just quickly show you what the other ones are, the other things in the menu. So we got release so if we select our shading we go up to object down to clip and release and that takes them apart again so they're both we've got our the shape that we used as our cookie cutter and we've got our blurred shading so if we with both of those still selected we go back up to object and now come down to clip set inverse what it's done if we get hold of this and move it away it's actually cut out the pair from our blurred shape instead of cutting the blurred shape to the shape of the pair one other thing i just wanted to mention about clipping it also works with uh, raster images so if we went up and imported an image Just OK to all the settings. So we have this image and we wanted to cut it out using clipping. We can draw a shape over the top, same as we would when we're making up our art. We can go up, oh, hold on, hold down shift. Hold down shift, select the image as well. So we've got the image and the clipping path selected. Then we can go up to object, down to clip and set. So we can cut out images the same way. This is quite handy if you want to put it inside writing or inside an, you know, an image of something else. So let's get back to our pair. So the other thing I want to talk about is masking. Masking is very similar to clipping, except we can use gradients to graduate um, how much of the image shows. So if we look at our, our green chili here, you can see that I've got this reflection underneath. So I've used a mask here to cover up some of that um, chili. We do a similar thing here. We're going to group this lot together. So we're take all of our bits and bobs we come up to group then i'm going to press ctrl d to duplicate i'm going to click on it i'm going to go over to our snapping menu on the right hand side i'm going to turn on snapping so we need to enable snapping to boundary boxes and i'm going to use snapping to boundary box uh, edge midpoints and we need to make sure that our rotational centers down the bottom are um, enabled as well. So I'm going to take the rotational center, I'm just going to snap it to the bottom midpoint of our boundary box. I'm then going to use flip it vertically. So we've got a reflected image down the bottom, or what's going to be our reflected image. Then 
I want this to be graduated so it, it disappears the further away it comes. To do this, all I'm going to do is drag a box over the top. We turn it to black. Now with masking, the lighter it is, the more visible the object is underneath. So if we have black at the bottom and white at the top, everything that's black will be completely hidden and disappear. And everything that's white will be visible. So we come over to fill and stroke. We're going to change it to linear gradient. So we've got a linear gradient. Now I'm going to drag the black stop down to the bottom and I'm going to take the transparent stop up to the top. So I've, I've found to get the best results, I use black graduating to white, fully opaque. So for the time being, we can leave it transparent at one end. But what I will do is take the color and take it to white. I'm going to move the bottom stop up so we lose some of that pair. If we go to the top stop now, we want this one to be fully opaque and white. So we turn that right up. We're going to get our selection tool. We're just going to drop it down one so it's behind our pair. If we click off, so we are select our pair. We are keep it selected, but we're just going to drop it down behind our masking path. And holding down shift, we can select our mask. And then we can go up to object, down to mask, set. And as you can see, we've got this nice graduated effect as it disappears. The other thing you can do if you think this is, this is too strong is you can use the opacity just to reduce it slightly. So it looks more like a, a subtle reflection. The other thing I had in the image that we looked at at the beginning was I had some shadows just underneath our image. So the way I created those was just take the ellipse, the ellipse tool, drag out an ellipse just to sit roughly where we want it. We turn off snapping because it can be a pain when you don't want it on. Um, we make our shadow black and we can turn the opacity up for the time being. So now we're going to blur it. So we can come over to our blur. Put a bit of blur on. That looks quite good. So we need to raise our pair. If we select our pair, we take that to the top. So if we come over, take it to the top. So the shadow is behind it. Now you can just leave it like that. If you think it's too dark, you can reduce it. Um, quite often what gives a nice effect is if we keep that, we're going to press Control D to duplicate it. And then we're going to shrink it down. So it's a, a smaller, darker shape where it's making contact with the ground. And then we can, again, we just raise our pair to the top so it's above it. So that's how we can create more realistic looking images with reflections, shadows, shading. Looks like I made a little bit of a boo-boo down there somewhere. I seem to have lightened up the bottom of my pair. But you can sit there and work on your art until you've got it looking nice. As with clipping, when we're masking we have the same things that we can use. So we've got we can set it, set inverse and we can release it if you ever want to go in, change something, and then you can reset it afterwards. So I hope that's been helpful. I'd like to know whether or not you knew about these techniques before. So yeah, please leave me a comment below. If you've got any questions, again, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. Thanks very much for watching.